So I want to show you why it's so important to turn off your wireless chipset on your mobile or laptop when you're not using it. So what I've got here is um, some tools that um, we're using to typically look for access points, wireless access points. And those are the few that I can see from my laptop around here. There's nothing particularly interesting there. What I find a lot more interesting is this. Instead of looking for the access points, I want to look for the wireless clients. So mobile phones, laptops, other wireless devices that are sending out packets. And what interests me is the probe um, name on the right hand side. That tells me what access point name the client is looking for. And that's when things start to get a little bit interesting. Now, it wouldn't take too much to work out um, names of these and link these up to companies. But what I can do is use a couple of really cool tools, um, a database called Wiggle. You can find it at wiggle.net. And essentially, it's a lot of people who've been out and been what we call um, stumbling um, and generating uh, GPS correlated um, maps of access point names and then map them onto um, Google Maps in this particular instance, but there are others around. And you can see all those little um, red dots, those are access points or points where people have picked up an access point from. Now, that happens to be a town, all very interesting, but what I find more interesting is if you actually have a unique access point name you pick up when you're out and about, you can actually work out where the person lives. I've got a great example of this. This is one from my, uh, my local town, and if I just go back to um, Wiggle, I can do a simple search. And if I go to a search by SSID, here's one I was out in my local town. Um, and I found this SSID on one of my stumbles. And let's see if we can find it. So there we go. We get one hit. You see, the SSID is unique. In the case of Orange with uh, a hex address afterwards, I can then pull the map off. And a couple of moments later, I find, oh, that's where the person lives. I didn't drive past that, ha that address. I was out and about um, in, my local, uh, in my local city. Um, but I found someone walk past me with a, a mobile device probing for the access point name. So it's not unreasonable to assume that's where they live. So it takes very little more to go from there and pull off um, Google Street View. And I've got an image of where you live. Now, I don't know if you saw the previous um, image. You could actually start tracking people based upon their movements around the, uh, around the country. Um, there are various retailers who've now set up little um, access points are actually listening to see how you move around a shop. So actually Big Brother is tracking you when you're moving around the world. So please, when you're not using it, turn off the wireless chipset on your phone and your laptop and your battery will last longer and you won't get tracked. Now something else that's worth doing is also thinking about what you call your access point. Now this is a completely generic default name that's come straight out of the box. The user hasn't bothered to change it. And as a result of that, it's only got one hit globally on this database, so I know exactly where it is. Now, if I was to do a slightly different um, search, what if um, someone actually thought about what they called their um, access point at home? What if they actually changed it to call it access point? Let's have a look to see how many people have got an access point called access point. And all of a sudden, you see there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people have an access point with the name access point. Why? Because they've changed it. It's now lost in all the noise. There's no way I could work out where this person lived because there are far too many access points called access point. So have a think about changing your access point name too.